What's up guys, we got a good show for you today, we have Sepp Straka, you won the Honda Classic this year, thanks for coming on man. Uh, yeah, thanks for having me. So, I was reading something earlier in the year, and is it true that you travel like tournaments uh, with a case of Diet Coke if you know the tournament only supplies Pepsi? Um, yeah, I usually figure that out early in the week if they have Pepsi products, and if they don't, I'll go to the, if they do, then I'll go to the store and get some Diet Cokes, put them in my locker. Yeah, so you're just stocked up for the week? Yeah. 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 No, that's funny. Um, so I know that like U.S. Open's coming, but I was just at the qualifying yesterday. Uh, so I know you're taking the week off, but like what's your preparation going into the, the open? Um, right now, early in the week, I'm just trying to make sure the fundamentals are there. Just checking on my swing, my mechanics on full swing, chipping, putting, uh, just making every, making sure everything's there. And then, uh, later in the week, just kind of getting sharp and kind of preparing a little bit. Um, so that way next week when I get there, I can kind of fully focus on the course and, and, uh, and just try to game plan for the tournament. So, like, what part of your game you think needs to be, like, the best for you to, like, have a shot at winning next week? Um, I think typically – I've never played that course, but typically U.S. Open's ball striking is pretty important. Uh, you got to put the ball in the fairway, so driving accuracy uh, is really important, and then just hitting solid iron shots. Uh, I think those two are, are really important uh, for U.S. Opens usually. Have you? So, have you ever been to Brookline or no? You've never been there. Uh, this will be my first time. My brother played the USM there years ago, um, and he's told me it's awesome and it's really hard, but uh, that's all I know. Yeah, so is that, like, hard to, like, prepare a little bit when you've never been there to, like, actually see it in person? So, like, what's, like, the best way to, to do that, I guess? Uh, yeah, uh, it is definitely a little more difficult. Um, early on, you kind of want to get the sight lines off the tee, just figure out what club you want to hit off of each tee and, and – kind of where you want to hit it uh, and where you don't want to miss it. And then uh, as the week goes on, you focus your preparation more around the greens, uh, chipping from from certain areas, kind of figure out exactly where the good spots are to miss and where the bad spots are. Yeah. So I wanted to kind of, I guess, now start like at the start of your career. So like you grew up in Austria uh, until you were like 14. So like what sports did you play growing up or was it always just golf for you? I, I grew up playing just about everything uh play played baseball uh played soccer um basketball and yeah I played everything till I was about 11 or 12 and then and then kind of focused a little more on golf when I was 11 or 12. Yeah so you came to America when you were 14 is that correct? Yeah. So when did you know like you could play golf at a higher level? Um I don't know really kind of kind of just went with it i just kind of kept checking off the next box so uh, when i was in high school uh, i didn't really think early on that i could play in college but then college coaches started showing interest and then went to college and then in college i was like yeah pga is a pipeline dream but then uh, you see all the guys from georgia that that end up going uh, and making it on the pga and you're like well i, I guess i'm one of those and uh so um yeah, just kind of checked off the next box, got on the corn ferry and, and, and had success there and, and got to the tour. So, yeah, just kind of kept my head down and, and just kept trying to get better. Yeah, something I never really, like, hear about on the golf side, like, in a lot of other sports, you ask, like, what the recruiting process was like, but I never really hear golfers get asked that. You know, what was that like for you as a high schooler? And, like, how was it, you know, to choose Georgia? Like, what were schools were you looking at also? Um, yeah, it was, uh, it was pretty interesting. Uh, I didn't really know anything about it until I started going through it. Um, you know, uh, I had a twin brother who was really good at golf too. So he kind of helped, uh, shed a little light on me as well. And, uh, yeah, there was a few schools that were, that were up there, uh, Georgia Southern, um, Auburn was very interested. Um, and I took a few visits, but Georgia was always the number one goal. I was, I grew up a Georgia fan. My mom's side of the family are all Georgia fans. Yeah. Uh, so when they offered, it was, it was pretty easy for me and my brother to just, uh, just put everything aside and get and say, we're going to Georgia. So, um, so yeah, the, the recruiting process was pretty interesting. Uh, I was always a little nerve wracking seeing some coaches at junior mm -hmm. tournament and just trying to play a little better, which yeah. really didn't help at all but <laughs> yeah but um but yeah it was it was always it was kind of fun yeah I know we have like a lot of like high school guys that watch this so like and a lot of guys are trying to get like recruited you know what is the best piece of advice that for that you would give someone going through that 
Uh, I would say just make sure you're playing tournaments. Uh, it doesn't have to be like all over the country, uh, but just make sure your your name is up there uh, at different tournaments and make sure that the coaches know that you are trying to play uh, and you're trying to play a lot. So I think playing a lot of tournaments is, is really important. And, uh, and yeah, just kind of putting yourself out there and, and uh, you yeah, know, don't be afraid to go up to a coach and, and talk to him, which I don't know what, with recruiting rules these days, I don't really yeah. know that. But, um, but yeah, just, uh, don't be afraid of like emailing a coach and, and, and all that. So, uh, yeah, I'd say that's, that's the most important thing. Yeah, no, they have, they've changed a lot, even since like in two years for me, since I got recruited since COVID and now it's like, it's crazy. Um, yeah. but for me in like college, my first year playing, I learned so much and I still have three more years left. What was the biggest thing like you learned at Georgia there? Um, I just I feel like Georgia, it was a very competitive environment. Um, I really learned how to play golf when I didn't have my best stuff because uh, we qualified for every tournament uh, for the whole lineup. Yeah. Uh, so it really taught me how to how to play golf, even when I'm not playing my best, because uh, you just had to post a score regardless of, of what you had going on that day. So um, that's the number one thing that I, I took away from Georgia. Yeah. So right after college, you played on the Corn Ferry Tour, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah. is, is there like nerves like like associated with playing down there? Because I know like everyone wants to get that like PGA Tour card. I feel like it'd be a very nerve wracking experience. Yeah, it really is. Uh, the most nervous I probably ever was was the final round of Q School trying to qualify for the Corn Ferry. Um, I was a, I was kind of close to the number. I think I was 27th, 25th going into the final round and or actually worse than that, I was like 40 something going to the final round, needed a good round. And yeah. uh, that was definitely the most, the ner- most nervous I've ever been. Um, I was trying to qualify for the corn fairy and then on the corn fairy. Yeah. You're just, uh, guys are going really low out there and you're just trying to get in that top 25. And that's really the only thing that matters. And, um, and it, it's pretty, it's pretty tough. It's pretty nerve wracking, but, uh, it definitely, <clears throat> it definitely helped my golf game a lot. Was, was it hard for like the adjustment to playing that many weeks in like a year or was that a pretty easy transition for you? No, it was definitely difficult. Um, I mean, we played a lot in college and I had a pretty busy summer always, but nothing like it was on the Corn Ferry. Uh, I think my first year I played 12 tournaments in a row, uh, which was kind of incri- kind of crazy looking back at it. Uh, um, but yeah, it, it definitely is an adjustment, uh, just life on the road in general you know, planning your, your flight, your hotel, where you're going to eat everything, where you're going to do laundry, uh, all that, that's kind of a, a just, and, uh, I think I, I learned a pretty good bit, uh, pretty early. I had some older friends that had been doing it for a while and, uh, they kind of showed me the ropes. Yeah. So you had an opportunity, like, that every kid like dreams of you play at the you know summer Olympics. And that's something like, even if you're not a golf fan, like everyone watches the Olympics. Um, what was that like experience like for you? It was awesome. Uh, it was great. Uh, unfortunately it was during COVID. So there weren't yeah. as many out there. Um, but man, it was a, it was a great experience. I have my brother on the bag. Um, Japan was awesome. The, the country is really, I'd really love to go back and, and just, uh, go on vacation out there one time. But, um, but yeah, the Olympics, it's a different, different feel. Uh, all you're trying to do is get one of those medals and, uh, it was a, it was a real special week. Yeah. So I know it probably was like weird with the restrictions, but like, what was Olympic village like being there? Uh, Olympic village was awesome. Uh, it was really cool. The, the coolest part was the dining hall just seeing all the different yeah. It's, and you can kind of just guess at what they are, you know, you see basketball players come in and you see gymnasts and they're yeah. about height. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, it was, it was pretty cool to kind of see that many different, uh, athletes from different countries kind of all come together there. Yeah. So you won the tournament that's close to me cause I live in Jupiter, Florida. So you won the Honda classic, you went in the final day down by five. Like what was your mindset like going into that day? Um, I felt pretty good about it. Uh, I know most courses, if you're back by five, you're going to have some trouble, but that course is just absolute carnage down there. I mean, there's one every hole, uh, just high numbers waiting to happen. So I knew with only one guy ahead of me at five shots, um, 
I knew I had a chance if I posted a pretty good round and, uh, and pretty quickly I found myself in contention after about four or five holes. I think Daniel made a big number early. So, um, so yeah, it, it, it was, uh, I felt pretty, I felt a lot more comfortable five shots back going into that round than, than I would at any other course, I think. Yeah. Do you think looking back on that day, like it was beneficial that you had to do a come, like come from behind to get your first win and like weeding at the start of the fourth round, like, you know, pressure of, you know, final, final group. Yeah. Uh, I think not having to sleep on it definitely helped yeah. a little bit pretty well on Saturday yeah. night, but, uh, but yeah, I, I usually would always want to have the, the, uh, the five shot lead, but on that yeah. court that anything can happen. So if you're, if you're on fire, whether you're back or, uh, you just gotta kind of keep your head down and, and try to keep hitting greens. Um, cause the high numbers can really pile up out there and, and, and sure enough, they did. Yeah. Other than like all the exemptions you get from that, like would like me winning the Honda classic mean to you? Uh, it's a lifelong dream come true. You know, you always grow up yeah. as a kid, pretend you have a putt to win the masters or win whatever, uh, they're playing that week. And, uh, it was a dream come true to just, uh, actually have that putt and, and, uh, and just look back at all the hard work and, and sacrifice, not only I, but my family and, and all my, uh, coaches and people that have helped me get here, uh, put into it. So, uh, it's just, yeah, it's a dream come true. Yeah. So I always think back to like the commercials on ESPN of like the masters and, you know, as a result of winning, you got to play there, like was driving down Magnolia lane, like as cool as they say it is. Yeah. It is. Every bit is cool. It is awesome. Uh, yeah. You're just driving through and all you see is these Magnolias. And then as you get towards the back of it, you see the clubhouse and man, it is, it's special. It is awesome. And uh, I, I just hope to get, get back there next year. Yeah. Um, so during your time, like on tour, has there been like one guy you've been able to like lean on for advice through it all? Uh, fortunately there's been a lot of guys just with Georgia, having so many guys out there, I've known a lot of them for a long time. So being able to lean on, on those, uh, guys and early on my career, uh, Bryce Garnett on the web, on the corn ferry, my first year, he, uh, I'd known him for, for a little while and he kind of was the guy that showed me the ropes out there and, and showed me the do's and don'ts. Yeah. So final, like a few questions. So, you know, why do you think like golf, like anyone can win every week? I feel like it's the most competitive sport. Like you don't see it in any sport. Like what, what's about that? Yeah. There's just so many good golfers and there's so much that goes into a winning week. I mean, you know, you got to play incredible. You got to, you got to have your game, but also you got to have things go your way. I mean, you're playing on a golf course outside. So many things can happen. Um, good bounces, bad bounces, bad draws with weather. You know, there's just yeah. uh, so much that goes into uh, into a week. And uh, so, yeah, the more chances you can kind of give yourself, I think that the more likely you are to end up, end up winning. Yeah. So from an outside like perspective, looking on this, like, Everyone's talking about Liv. I don't really want to talk about Liv, but I feel like a big component with Liv is trying to, like, make golf better. Um, what are, like, a few ways that golf can be better, you think? Um, I think it's going in a pretty good good uh, direction. I think if they could just, you know, keep growing the game like they have been the last 10 or so years, 10, 20 years, um, just keep trending in that direction, making it more accessible, I think that would be great. Um and yeah, I think it's, you're seeing that as a result, there's just so many people, so many kids that are growing up wanting to play golf now in high school. Uh, and that I feel like didn't used to be the case. So it's getting more competitive. There's, uh, kids coming out of college are really, really good, uh, ready to compete. So, um, so yeah, I think it, it's, it's heading in a pretty good place. Yeah. I was just talking about that last week with Jared Wolf. We were talking about how like at all these like young guys and high schoolers, like now every week I get texts from my friends that don't even play golf. They're like, Hey, do you want to play this week? I definitely yeah. see it's like growing. Um, yeah. It's so more cool. Yeah. I know. <clears throat> so I know you're a big Georgia fan. What was it like when Georgia won this year? It was awesome. It was great. We had, uh, I think we had 10 guys, 10 Georgia guys in Hawaii. We rented a conference room down there at a hotel. We were at the tournament. Um, yeah and uh watched it together and man it was that was awesome that 
I think that was, I said I was most nervous I've ever been during the uh, Corn Ferry Q school, but yeah. I think that was the most nervous I'd ever been because I had no control over it. I was, I was just, uh, I couldn't eat. I was ready for the game to start and it, it was awesome that, that they brought home the win. Yeah, I know. It's funny how like sports does that to you. It's so funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So this is the last question. We always finish off with it. So when your career is over down the line, how do you want to be remembered? Um, that's a good question. Yeah. Uh, just, uh, I would say a guy who's generous, who's, uh, you know, doesn't let the highs and lows of golf get to him off the golf course and, and around the golf course. So I'd say that's probably the, the one thing. Yeah. Well, Seth, I appreciate you coming on, man. Good luck at the U S open next week. Um, thanks again, man. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, man.